Yes. Um, so what happens if, for example, you need to run very similar jobs on um, different molecules? Or what if you have to run different jobs but on the same molecule? There's a way of um, avoiding having to create a gazillion input files and then having to deal with many, many different output files that you can accidentally that's what I did, accidentally rename and then you don't know what happened anymore and this is just annoying. So the way around it is that you would um, put uh, several jobs within the same input file and then um, they, they will come out nicely um, ordered and in an expected way. Uh, so I want to show you how to do that. Um, today we will work with this crazy looking drug molecule um, it's called ethipole almost like an ethical pole or yeah okay forget it um, so yeah uh, you can download the coordinates for this one if you really want to work on this one I don't see why but why not um, on pubchem that's where I got it and uh, the deal with the several jobs input, so here it is. Uh, so for me, the first job is an optimization, but then I don't want to do it using DFT because it's a big molecule and I don't care really about what the geometry will be like because I'm assuming it's okay. So I'm using a semi-empirical AM1, so there's no basis set required. And I um, added this keyword, it's called, it's XYZ file, and it tells Orca that in this case, could you please make um, an XYZ file once you're done optimizing, and you will call it opt.xyz. All right, and then everything else is the same with the coordinates and the little stars that we wear. And then we get to the additional jobs here and every job starts with a space, uh, like an empty line, and then you have the dollar sign, new job. Here the important stuff is first of all, you need to change the name. So you can't have opt as the base name here in the job tool. Um, and here the the other important thing is instead of adding the coordinates because for me the point was I don't know what the coordinates are because in the first step I'm going to optimize it right so I just the program use those this file that's going to have the optimized coordinates and the name of the file is of that XYZ so very convenient um, and then I changed the uh, charge um, uh, in job two and job three. My job two is is negative one, and my job uh, three is plus one. So I have the anion and the cation of the neutral molecule, and everything else is the same. So there's note that there's no like additional star afterwards that there was here because this star indicates the end of the coordinates and here there's no coordinates. No coordinates, no start. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to point out is if you go into the ORCA manual and then you type out, like you search for output details or something like that, there's a whole section. It's, it's several pages of like this table that shows you all the things you can ask to be output in your file. Uh, for example, uh, this Hirsch felt Hirsch. How do you pronounce his last name? Is it Hirschfeld? Hirsch felt Hirsch guy. Hirsch friend. I'm gonna call him Hirsch friend. This wonderful person came up with um, a different charging scheme. Uh, it's like Milliken charges, but then you have Hirsch friend 
charges and for some purposes apparently they're better I don't know why but hey oh yeah I know why it's because they're less basis set dependent am I right I think I'm right I always think I'm right and until I know like I learned that I was wrong okay well worst case if I'm not right someone will correct me in the comments and then I will have to make a public apology all right so um what am I doing here? Oh yeah, so um, yeah, if you go into the output section, you can like ask it to print uh, crazy amounts of information that you didn't know it could do. So this is something that I did here. Um, you, the format is important though because otherwise you're gonna get errors and you won't understand what's going on. So you need to put square brackets and then inside the square brackets you put the keyword and then you add a space and then you write one because one turns on the printing okay so let's get to the um, to the output file are we gonna get to the output file computer I think you can do it all right so the output file looks like this you will have your input copied and then it will tell you how many jobs will be run in this uh, output and every job is separated by um, this header telling you that one is over and the new one is to start and everything else is the same uh, except maybe for the fact that well you can't open it in Avogadro anymore because the program goes like nuts it doesn't know what what which coordinates to open even though you can just look for the last one um, so you either um, can just look for um, the Cartesian coordinates and then like copy them into uh, your own like create your own xyz file uh, or you can just look for the xyz file created by the program at the end of the calculation so it's whatever you want to do um, yeah okay so for people who were only interested in how to run several um, input files uh, I can uh, say farewell to you and have a good evening or night or whatever time of the day and then people who are interested in the Fukui coefficients you can tag along and I shall show you how I calculated them so I'm not gonna go into how um, the theory and like how these are created I'm just gonna show you how I calculated the condensed Fuku so it's per atom using this Hirsch friend Hirsch friend analysis Hirsch friend analysis okay and um, arguably you could use other analyses I don't know uh, you have to read on some literature on it I don't think I know enough about it to like argue about anything here so yeah uh, so yeah very simple uh, if you want uh, th there's a three different ones in electrophilic attack nucleophilic attack and radical so here I'm computing the radical one if you want the uh, the other two you need to get the Hirschfeld analysis for the neutral molecule as well which is something I haven't done here so you have to do it on your own um, so here I will just select the charge Bloop. oh did you know how I did it do you know how I selected one column and a text file if you're in a notepad plus plus you can click on alt and then start your selection and it will go only for a column it's been like two years and I know this trick and I think it's just amazing uh, yeah I'm easily entertained okay so you copy these charges um, let's say into Excel and then um, the the radical attack uh, Fukui are just the average of the two so you do cation minus anion divided by half and you get these and then you can sort them so like if you select all of them and you click on sort 
custom sort you can sort them by the column so for me it's column E and then largest to smallest and then the largest coefficients give you the places where the radical attack is the most probable pro 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 favored where the molecule is okay being attacked radically okay um, so yeah I, I won't argue about how precise this is but um, it can give you an idea at least okay so no theory here because I'm, it's not the place for it uh, I think it's done and um, I apologize if this tutorial was not coherent I'm kind of tired so I'll see you next time and I hope you're having a great uh, great start of the summer yay